Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 285 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, we are going to dive into what can cause issues that drive dry, itchy, red, sore eyes. So many people in my audience, especially those who struggle with histamine issues, complain that their eyes feel really uncomfortable. And since this is something that I have some experience with because my dad was an ophthalmologist, I thought that it would be great to have someone in the eye field come on the show to talk more about this. And my guest today, Dr. Carly Rose, is extremely knowledgeable about this topic. And in fact, this is an area that she focuses on in in her practice. Dr. Rose is an optometrist who received a bachelor's of science in biology from Northern Kentucky University before heading off to optometry school in Chicago. She then chose to complete a year long residency at the Cincinnati VAMCI clinic. Dr. Rose owns a comprehensive primary care practice called I Care on the Square and a dry eye med spa called Clear Eyes and Aesthetics in Cincinnati, Ohio. She is a current member of the American Optometric Association, the Ohio Optometric Association, and the American Academy of Optometry. So without further ado, let's dive into today's conversation. Dr. Rose, thank you so much for being here on the show. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. So I was really excited to be introduced to you because as you know, we were talking about before, my dad was an ophthalmologist and I, I guess there's a certain place in my heart for eye issues as a result of that. And that's one reason why I like to talk about this on the Healthy Skin Show, because while we aren't necessarily dealing with, when we're talking about skin, we don't think about the connection to our eyes, but a lot of people struggle with eye issues, especially like, you know, as you guys might remember, we had another episode on like steroid creams and placing them on the face and especially around the eye area. And so when it comes to dry eye, this is an issue that some people have. Sometimes medications can make it work. Like some, some of you guys know Dupixin is one of those things that can sometimes exacerbate um, eye issues. What is dry eye? That is, it's such a com it's, it's a complicated, confusing condition, honestly. And you hit the nail on the head because we often just forget. So in optometry school, let me summarize, you had just mentioned that we often remember that the eyes are a connection to the brain. They're just an extension of brain tissue. The eyelids are an extension of the skin. They're a very complex, it's a modified skin. We have modified hair cells as eyelashes. You have modified oil glands as meibomian glands, but they're truly an extension of the skin. So everything you could imagine, how you can imagine inflammatory skin conditions, you get inflammatory eyelid eye conditions. So it is really, really similar. Um, dry eye in a nutshell is something that is causing a lack of homeostasis in the tear film. So the tear film is really complex. It's over 2000 different molecules, oils, mucus, water, antibodies, lipids, growth factors, awesome stuff, right? To keep the cornea really healthy. And anything that causes a disruption in that balance causes an ocular surface condition. So it could be blocked oil glands, it could be an incomplete blink, it could be a complication of medications like high blood pressure meds, it could be an inability to digest lipids if you say have a diabetic or a pancreatic digestive enzyme problem. It's really complex, but when you nail down to the root of it, it's getting your tears back to where they should be. So how do we do that? It depends on what you have going on. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking that it sounds like tears are a lot more than just water. Oh, they're a lot more than just water. They're very, very complex. And it's really cool because it's also kind of like breast milk in that it changes the, the, the percentage of components depending on what's going on in the environment. So they're reactive. 
Oh my gosh. And then too, isn't there like, I would imagine like a microbiome too in the mm-hmm. eye area? You're Just exactly like- right. You're exactly right. And so actually specifically Demodex is a skin bug, you know, that also lives in lashes and brows. And it is a big contributor to this ocular surface disease. So we have to worry about bacterial overload. We have to worry about your mechanical blink. So for example, we're all on screens. When we look at screens, we blink 75% less than we should. And that's the pump for the oil portion of our tears. So all of our pumps are going out. And then we have all of these other things going on. It's just a recipe for disaster. In fact, there are, we've all heard of glaucoma and macular degeneration. There are more dry eye patients than all macular degeneration and glaucoma patients combined. And that number is growing exponentially. It's just, uh, I used to call it an epidemic. I can't really use that word anymore, but it, it is a big deal right now. And as I would imagine since um, with COVID and everyone shifting to screens and using Zoom and whatnot, and, and it's become more accepted, essentially, I would imagine that it's got potentially gotten worse because you did say it's that- It's been confirmed that it's getting worse. Wow. Plus, there's this weird component with breathing and tear production, and specifically nose breathing. And so there was a mask-associated dry eye condition that we saw come out. And that was because we were forcing air directly into the eyes, kind of like a CPAP. But then also there's this component of, uh, it's actually trigeminal parasympathetic stimulation. Nose breathing produces up to a third of our tears. So it's been fascinating to watch this condition change just in the past couple of years. This episode is brought to you by my line of professional grade supplements called NutraQuell. I crafted these supplements, especially for those struggling with chronic skin rash issues and based the formulations on my extensive research and clinical experience in my private practice. They are made from the highest quality ingredients and tested to be free of different allergens so that you can support your gut, liver, and overall health with the formulas that I found work best for my Skin Rash Warrior clients without triggering a flare. I'm excited to share them with you, so check them out at quellshop.com and use the coupon code GET15OFF to get 15% off your first order. I'll put a link in the description below. And now let's jump back to the video. So even just the way you breathe, like if you start to pay attention to how you breathe, if you find that you're mouth breathing a lot, or, I mean, we've talked about mouth breathing versus nose breathing during sleep here on the show, that could be a a part of the solution potentially for someone listening. Exactly. And there are companies like taking advantage of that pathway as well to try to turn the system back on. It's fascinating. Hmm. So um, for somebody who does have dry eye, I think it would be helpful, you know, because sometimes like we assume because we know what it is. And and I sort of like it's the the semi osmosis thing because my dad had was an eye doctor. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know what dry eye is. But what if someone's listening to this and just is like my eyes feel scratchy? Like what is dry eye? So for the patient, what they usually experience is red, irritated, watery eyes. That's one most people get confused by because why would my eyes water if they're dry? But watery eyes for sure. Um, If your vision comes and goes and blinking kind of changes it, that could be dry eye. Uh, Dry eye actually often gets misdiagnosed as a contact lens intolerance or allergies. So also if your contact lenses are bothering you like crazy, it's probably an insufficient tear film. Okay. And what about, is dry eye the same or connected to when like you have conjunctivitis or blepharitis or when even if just the whites of the eyes are getting more like pink or tend to stay pink more often? Absolutely. So that's technically called injection. When your eyes are injected, they're red, swollen, irritated. And that is one of the most common complaints I get from my dry eye patients. So that's a biggie. Conjunctivitis is like a global term of conjunctival irritation. Usually with our 
are the syntax we use, right? When we call something conjunctivitis, most people associate that with a bacterial conjunctivitis. That's not usually directly linked to dry eye, but blepharitis for sure is. So blepharitis is just an inflammation in the lashes, basically. And that is inflammation or, you know, build up that demodex we were talking about. All of that's kind of lumped together in this blepharitis that feeds right into this ocular surface disease. It's this vicious cycle of something is disrupting our system. Okay. Now with the demodex mites, which my audience is somewhat familiar with, about they we've talked about demodex in terms of rosacea and potentially finding them sometimes in other conditions like eczema on the face is it normal to have demodex mites living in the eye area so they're like a commensal essentially basically and what happens is so we all have 60 to 80 oil glands per eye in our upper and lower lids and they open along the lid margin so that water line where people tight line and put eyeliner right on that lid line, you shouldn't because that's where the oil glands open. And so what happens is the two lids touch together during a blink and that oil should be nice and clear and liquid like olive oil and it should squeeze easily out and lubricate the surface of your eye. All kinds of things are clogging those oil glands, including lack of blinking and putting cosmetics on the lid line and Demodex. But what happens is they get obstructed and that nice, clear, healthy liquid oil turns into more solid, insipidus, thick, cruddy oil. And Demodex loves that. It turns into junk food for them. And so then they get overpopulated and now we have a Demodex problem. Oh, wow. That is fascinating. So, okay, so we've got this issue and you mentioned makeup too, <laughs> which for many women, especially as we're going back to the office and you go out to events, you know, it's always nice to be like, oh, I'm going to put on, you know, like really nice eyeliner, right? Mm -hmm. Eyeliner or mascara or whatever. Well, so what are your thoughts on that in terms of like, what do you recommend to your patients to be cautious of or to be mindful of? It sounds like you have to be careful of where you're, where you're actually applying it, even despite the trendiness of putting, um, applying ma eye makeup, especially very close to the eye. Exactly. You're exactly right. It goes, starts at application, right? And then type and ingredients and then removal. All of those things are important for the ocular surface. So the best way to summarize it is you really do want to avoid the waterline. Um, you, the healthier options for things like mascaras would be not waterproof, not fibers. Then we could talk about lash extensions and falsies and lash serums. All of those things could potentially do damage, specifically with lash growth serums. You want to look for something called a prostaglandin analog that's going to cause inflammation. So you want to avoid prostaglandins, right? There's those, it's, it's, it's Pandora's box. And then you want to make sure you're, you want healthy, clean ingredients, right? But then you want to make sure you remove them properly. That's a big piece too, that a lot of people don't think about. So what are you using in your removers? Are, how much force are you needing to use on the lashes? And are you doing it? Are you keeping your cosmetic brushes clean? Those are proven to carry bacteria. So you wanna make sure everything's clean, cleaned off at the end of the day. Yeah, I know that one thing that I have probably not been so good about is cleaning the brushes and it, all you need is soap and water. You don't need a whole lot in order to clean things appropriately, but it is important to keep things, especially I think like my dad, just, we saw so many different issues in his office. It was instilled in me that you want to protect your eyes as much yes. as possible. We take, we take them for granted for sure. Mm -hmm. And then when I, I see it all day, every day, when something does go wrong, you're like, oh my gosh, I should have been more careful. Yeah. It happens every time, every time. So beyond makeup, what else could potentially cause dry eye issues? Like we mentioned the screen time, we mentioned an incomplete blank makeup. What are some other things that people might not realize or connect the dots on? A huge kind of bucket of dry eye patients are autoimmune type patients and connective tissue disorder patients. 
there's usually a faulty, a kind of like chronic inflammation brewing throughout the body that manifests as really irritated, uncomfortable red eyes. Okay. And any other issues with like food or out, like, could it be due to maybe an uh, IgE allergy to something in your environment, or maybe even something that you're using in your skincare or, or your makeup? All, all of the above plus some, you know, is there mold in your house? Um, is it screens like we mentioned? Is it sometimes uh, device implants? right throughout the body cause this inflammation. So it really is treating the underlying condition is going to be digging down and seeing what exactly is causing your specific source. Um, it could also be hormone imbalances. There's a whole, we, it's, it's, uh, it's research. Every dry yeah. eye patient is research. Is research. And you mentioned too, I had mentioned Dupixent as a potential issue. It's a side effect of the drug for some individuals, about, I think about 10% um, of users of that medication. But are there any other medications that could actually contribute to dry eye issues? Yeah, there are quite a few. Most anxiety meds, depression meds, ADHD meds, and then also high blood pressure meds. Those are huge. Allergy meds. Anything that dries you out, dries oh, the whole wow. system out. Oh, wow. So, so that's why it's confusing when dry eye is misdiagnosed as allergies because you're treating it as allergies and it's making the problem worse. So and in terms of allergy medications, would this be something like Benadryl or are we looking yeah. to maybe like Allegra or Zyrtec or one of these other over-the-counter type medications that are non-drowsy? Correct. All of them plus allergy eye drops. So a lot of people self-medicate with an allergy drop and it's making their dry eye worse. Okay. Or a lot of patients even self-medicate with over-the-counter artificial tears. And that's usually not even the answer. The answer is figuring out what's causing your inflammation and treating it appropriately. Yeah. And and that was something I was going to ask you is, you know, a lot. there's a lot of dry eye medication. Well, not even medication. I don't know. They're over the counter for m most of them. Um, I mean, I know that when my dad was practicing, there was like one or two, I think that were prescriptive. Um, but at, that's not the greatest option. And, and I do think, I think I, if I recall, I believe the other ophthalmologist I had on mentioned perhaps that they might be possibly like almost addictive in a sense, or there could be a compounding effect. If somebody wants to try something that might maybe is less invasive, maybe they don't want to go a medication route. Um, are there any other options to help with the dry eye issue beyond like blink more? Don't look yeah. at your screen all day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll give you my homework that I tell everybody that'll listen, even if they don't have dry eye, because from my perspective, ev everyone is a potential dry eye patient waiting to happen because the worlds were just migrating through. It's kind of a side effect of these unnatural environments. And so I tell everyone to do hot compresses. So hot, hot cloth or a microwavable eye mask, five or 10 minutes, a couple times a day. What that's going to do is melt those clogged oil glands and then get the oil flowing like it's supposed to. I also think everyone should be doing blink exercises. And okay. specifically the way I tell people to do it is either raise or relax your eyebrows and squeeze just with your eyelids. So raise your eyebrow, relax your eyebrows. I'm literally trying this. It's okay, tricky. Wait. It's tricky, right? <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. You just want to squeeze with your eyelid muscles, okay. not the other facial muscles. And you want to do that two to three times an hour. And do you hold for like five seconds or just 10 a seconds? couple of seconds? Okay. Yeah, not too long. Just squeeze, hold open, squeeze, hold open. And then supplementing with an omega. I particularly look for a triglyceride formed um, omega-3. So I don't necessarily look at omega-6s or omega-9s. I look at omega-3s. You want it to be the triglyceride backbone, not the ethyl ester formulation. It absorbs a lot better and you want your EPA and DHA to be over 2000. I'm not so particular on the ratios. Um, some people are. I think if you can get above 2,000 in any ratio, um, we're better off than we were with food. That's a fat soluble. And then a good lid wash. So the goal is we're filling the glands back up with the right kind of oil. 
some type of omega. You want to heat it and melt it out with the hot compress. You want to blink it out, squeeze it out, and then you want to wash it all away. So that's for everyone. Next level stuff, that's where you would want to look at if you really have dry eye and you're doing heat, fish oil, blink, exercise, lid wash, and you're still reaching for teardrops and you're finding no relief, you really want to find a dry eye specialist that can do things like mybography, which is a picture of your oil glands, or osmolarity, or these other, bio we can do biometric testing of your tear film. So we can take a little tear film sample and see what type of inflammatory agents are in there and salt. So, so there's a lot more we can do outside of a traditional comprehensive I care like room that you would think of with the better one or two. There's a lot of diagnostics behind it that are super cool. That is really neat. Is this something that you could go to any eye doctor to have done? No. So um, a lot of eye doctors can look at, they look at the surface of your eye, right? But not all of them do the biometric testing where they take the tear samples or something called mybography is flipping the lids and getting an infrared picture of the oil glands, the structure of the glands. And so if you do have a condition that you're not finding relief from, for sure, find a specialist that has have these technologies and your eye care provider should be able to refer you to that specialist, just like referring out for cataract surgery. They should have a referral in their head. Okay. That's good to know because sometimes if you don't know who to ask, you know, and it sounds like too, maybe you could even ask maybe your like primary care doctor if you're not currently seeing an ophthalmologist or an optometrist. Um, but looking for somebody that specializes in this sounds like that would be really important. Cause as I'm thinking about all of these, this testing, I'm like, my dad didn't do that. No. <laughs> that was not in his wheelhouse. That didn't exist, you know, five years ago. It didn't even exist. Wow, this is a huge this is a huge change in how things are are being done to help people, which I think is a good thing. So, um, in terms of like other treatment options, you had mentioned something uh, called IPL. Do you want to share a little bit about like what that is, how it came about? Yeah, for sure. So, so then you're we're jumping basically from next level treatments, right? So you have the homework, the home therapy. What would you do if you were a dry eye patient and then you were coming in for in office procedures? In my practice, we usually do packages of multiple procedures because you have multiple different things going on. So uh, most people need some type of IPL, which is stands for intense pulse light which is actually a photofacial that was developed in skincare, just derm aesthetics for rosacea. And on accident, around 20 years ago, an ophthalmologist in Tennessee discovered that it was helping his dry eye patients. So now we have over 100 peer-reviewed studies and FDA approval that came out in like 19 or 20 that shows how effective IPL is for dry eye. So that usually cuts the, it kills demodex, it cuts the inflammatory agents, it cuts, it. so inflammation, it has a little bit of thermal. Um, I don't talk about the thermal much because we'll get into that in a second. It, it does all kinds of cool things. So usually we do a series of four IPL and something called a thermal evacuation. So we have a lot of different ways to heat up and express out those oil glands in office. So usually we cut the inflammation, get the oil glands unclogged. It's like plumbing for your oil glands. We make sure that you don't have some type of corneal neuralgia or some nerve problems too, and get you back on track to where then heat, fish oil, blink, exercise, lid wash actually works for you. So we put the fire out and then keep the fire out. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some basic questions that I remember when I worked for my dad, he would go in the room and he'd be talking about doing some sort of laser and he'd walk out and the person would be sitting there like terrified because they don't understand. They're like, is he going to burn my eye? Like they just didn't understand. So, so if we're talking about IPL, which is, you said this pulse, this pulse light, is this something where you're touching the eye or is this just like a literally a light treatment? It is light. Uh, we do laser grade corneal shields. 
So we, the eyes protected, ultrasound jelly all over the face, and it's I do basically a full face treatment. It's it's um it's a machine that I ha mix all my settings in there, right? And I go through the face with these very strategic areas and target different lesions, um, different vascular like broken blood vessels because those are weak leaky blood vessels. So those blood vessels shouldn't be there and they're leaking inflammation basically. So we want to target the, the abnormal vasculature and do that about every two to four weeks. Okay. And you said this was developed for rosacea patients originally. Yes. So it really helps reds and browns. There's a little bit of collagen production, but it really targets freckles, age spots, sunspots, um, rosaceas, things like that, telangiectasias. And if somebody had rash, like active rashes, so active eczema or psoriasis spots on the face, would that be contraindicated? We would couple with their derm with that. Okay. We've had a handful of patients that were not your typical, right? And so we partnered with their derms or one patient, we partnered with her ob just to go through it in a specific fashion. Those are the outliers. Yeah. And I, I think it's helpful for people to hear just so that they know the options and they can ask the right questions. I always think that's well, important. And what's great about this is it really does rebuild your skin barrier. And so it would only help all of it as long as you didn't have active lesions and, and other complications. Okay. Um, in terms of dry eye, just long term, is this something that you're doomed to have for your entire life if you have it now? I, I'm a glass half full type of girl. So I don't, I'm going to say no, but it's going to take a lot of education on the eye care provider side to tell patients to look out for this, to take blink exercises, to drink enough water, to get enough sleep and prevent it. Our mission will be on prevention, I think, because the numbers are skyrocketing. So it's our job to do things like these podcasts. So thank you for having me because the more people I can tell, the more we'll prevent it. Yeah. And, and I also know that this is a frustration that clients have. And my, my advice is always, well, I would recommend you go see an eye doctor. Just that's what my dad would say. So <laughs> that's what I recommend. But this is very specific. This is different than other issues. And as you said, there's newer treatments out that could be helpful that depending, you know, some people are uncomfortable doing more medications. They've had bad experiences with meds. So maybe this light treatment might be a better option, or they could find some other piece of the puzzle that could be going wrong that you wouldn't normally think about or consider. Like you said, it could be demodex issues. It could be screen time, any number of things. And so I think educating people is always the first step in this process. And I also know that there are people that are really squeamish about anything that comes to their eyes. <laughs> um, so and that's fair. That happens too, right? And, and yes, it does. Exactly. And so it's my hope that by having this conversation if you've been on the fence or you've been uncomfortable about going to get help, you now know there are options and there are people, especially in, so Dr. Rose is an optometrist um, who works with patients like this. Um, Dr. Rose, where are you located and are you currently seeing patients? I am in Cincinnati, Ohio. We actually have two different locations. One is primary care, kind of like comprehensive, full scope. And then the second location is a dry eye med spa specific for dry eye treatment, dry eye diagnostics, and then also aesthetic services that won't cause dry eye, right? So the healthy patients that want to get different things that don't want to end up as a dry eye patient. So those are both in Cincinnati. I have multiple associates that are fabulous and we are at both locations accepting new patients. Perfect. Well, we'll put all of your contact information right into the show notes. Is there a website that anyone listening to this can check out? The, the one that's most related to dry eye would be theclearexperience.com. And then our other website also has lots of dry eye info on there, and that's called iCareOnTheSquare.com. And iCare is E-Y-E-C-A-R. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing today. I really appreciate it. It's been a Thank pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking about this, and I hope that... 
like I said, either this is going to entice someone to go actually get help who's really been putting it off and who was afraid that they were only going to end up with eye drops, um, or potentially someone is now having an aha moment realizing, oh, this is not the just whole my time. This right. Is dry eye. This was dry yes. eye, and I actually need to go get this checked. So thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad that we were able to have Dr. Rose on the show to discuss what are sometimes complicated topics, especially around the eyes. We always wanna be mindful of the eyes. And so many of my clients and community members struggle with this issue, so I thought this was a really great opportunity to dive into this further. If you'd like to check out any of the links and resources associated with this episode, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 285. And there you can find everything, including the complete transcript, as well as leaving your questions and comments so we can keep the conversation going. And if you know someone who is struggling with dry, irritated red eyes, make a point to share this episode with them, then head over to your podcast platform, rate and review The Healthy Skin Show, let people know why you love this show and find it so valuable, and then hit the subscribe button. That way you never miss a weekly dose of inspiration, hope, clinical strategies, and all sorts of alternative tips that can help you along your journey to rebuilding healthy skin. And then let's connect over on Instagram. I'm at Jennifer Fugo. Thanks so much for tuning in. And I look forward to diving deeper with you in the next episode.